Well, hello everybody. We're going to talk about a subject which has certainly become uh, rather hot and rather confused in many ways because I think people are looking at the proverbial elephant from the tails, the legs, the trunks to the ears. And so uh, my group at Exxon, which is Chris Johnson and Patricio Figueiredo, we've been working on this for maybe six to eight years with a whole range of data sets on, on passive margins. And so um, I would like to share with you uh, some of the things that we have been uh, doing. Um, I would like to really talk about maybe giving some, uh, some structure in a way to see what dipping reflectors and what they might mean. So uh, let's start. We've got some things to get through here. I think there's mixed signals of the location, timing and properties of seaward dipping reflectors. And so there's a number of, of uh, cross sections here or schematics from margins and we'll look at these first. Uh, so let's look at the Geoffroy's picture here where and other, these numbers here, one, two, three, et cetera, relate to comments that I make up here. So the underlying here, the, the number one, the underlying magmatic signature here is really pre seaward dipping reflector volcanic flows like continental flood basalts uh, per se, and that's the purple, the light purple color. So, so these are, could be the Paraná basalts, so these could be uh, the, the basalts of Greenland are sort of hinted here. There's also within the rift basins that are clearly on continental crust, uh, in the Sin Rift, there are fault controlled seaward dipping reflectors. And, and really these are an ugly word, this seaward dipping reflector, because if in fact I have flat, reflect, flat uh, basalts like here, and they get involved in a rotation, well, of course there's seaward dipping. Are they, are they really of the class of SDRs that I think we really want to know about? And so we tend to talk about these, uh, number one, one and two, as being either pre-rift or sin rift volcanic flows, like continental flood basalts. Uh, number three here in the Geoffroy picture is basically so-called fault-controlled SDRs out on ocean crust. And I say so-called because I, we don't believe this is a general characteristic of SDRs per se, and I hope to show you why. So now let's go to this picture here uh, to the right, top right, where we're looking at the margin of, of, of uh, East Greenland. And we see a word here for, oh, this is the tectonic breakup unconformity. And we sort of scratch our heads, well, really? Well, all of this material here is basically a cindrive package. And so, no, this is not the breakup unconformity. But in fact, there's another, uh, if I go down here, there's another line here, this red line, which actually separates these dipping reflectors, these flows uh, within the sin rift basins or within rift basins and maybe pre-rift flows to a package over here, which actually onlaps back onto this uh, package of, of the reflectors here. So this is what we call the classic SDRs, the seaward dipping reflectors. Uh, so this line here is basically separating sin kinematic or deformed volcanic flows from post breakup post breakup, essentially under form seaward dipping reflectors. And in this beautiful picture here by Patton and others that came out some years ago, um, the same sort of thing they mapped using ion GXT data. This idea of six that there's an inner SDR package and an outer SDR package. Um, and in fact, these guys, these, these so-called SDRs, on lap back in here, a, a series of sin rift basaltic flows or maybe even pre rift basaltic flows. So they have already recognized as inner or outer. And then they sort of confuse it with, well, a very broad ocean continent boundary that goes way out over, over the uh, SDRs here and comes in under uh, attenuated and, and intruded continental crust. What I'd like to, what I'd like to do now is, this never works for me. What I'd like to now do is a review of oceanic crust seismic geometries. And while I know a lot of you know this, let's just review it quickly. So here is a beautiful di a time section, a seismic section uh, from the Espiritu, so deep water Espiritu Santo Basin in Brazil. And here is the Pacific Ocean crust seismic structure at the same scale. This is a depth scale and this is a, a time scale. And if we look in here, we see that the ocean, we know that the oceanic crust is formed at spreading ridges by the decompressive melting of basically a stenospheric upper mantle to form basalt and gabbros. 
and the basalts, basically these pillar basalts, basalt and, and, and sheeted dikes, they form layer two. And then from layer two, we move down into a second layer here, which is basically composed of gabbros, and it seems to have a characteristic crisscross pattern. You'll notice know, see this crisscross pattern. And this crisscross pattern is, has been interpreted by many um, to be uh, related to crystal mush stones and plastic deformation associated with migrating axial magma chambers. So the idea is that this is the magma chambers, this is where the melting has occurred, and to give rise to the basalts above, so basalts of layer two and cumulant gabbros, uh, et cetera, of uh, layer three of ocean crust. So we have this interesting join here of layer two or interface between layer two and layer three. And then we have a very nicely defined moho uh, we, when we go down uh, into basically the, uh, the cenospheric mantle uh, or peridotites of, 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 uh, of, uh, of, the, of the oceanic system. So with this picture in mind, I would now like to take us and look at a seismic line from the Sojitishaquipi uh, margin on the northeast Brazil. Uh, it's north of the, of the section we just looked at. And here we see, uh, this is a depth section. So here's five kilometers, uh, 10 kilometers for scale over, over here. And what we notice here is some very, very interesting reflectors as, as well. We notice out here to the right, this is typical ocean crust. It's of the order of eight to 10 kilometers thick. Uh, here, in fact, is our sort of um, zone here where you don't see very much. So this would be the layer two where I should cross the basement. We come here to a join between layer two and layer three. Here is a moho here. It's a little broken up here because we have a whole lot of fracture zones that have broken up this part of the ocean crust. Now, if I go all the way to the left, we actually see a moho that is lifting. Uh, and so we actually have a continent. This is about 25 kilometers thick here. And so this is a continental crust. It has been rifted and necked. And we're seeing the necking sort of coming down into a zone in here. And then we come into this intermediate region. So this is still thin continental crust, thin continental crust. We have a moho sitting in here. And then we see we have classic seaward dipping reflectors where uh, they seem to start from somewhere over here and they, they're convex down and they sort of stop at a zone more or less in here. And if we go laterally to the right, we can see that these SDR packages, their reflector lengths get less and less and less and they actually merge into layer two of ocean crust. Similarly, a crisscross pattern starting in about here somewhere actually merges laterally into layer three of ocean crust. So we propose that basically SDR crust or seaward dipping, seaward dipping reflector crust is nothing more than a special form of ocean crust. And why is it special? Because we believe that these reflector patterns are produced subaerially. So this, sub, this seaward dipping reflector package is sub, basically subaerial seafloor spreading. And then when I bury or I, I, I put this underwater, when this whole margin is flooded, and this ocean crust is flooded, then we get the typical ocean crust in here. So this would be normal ocean crust, of marine seafloor spreading starting from here. We call this SDR or magmatic crust, it's subaerial uh, spreading, subaerial seafloor spreading. And where we see the first crisscross, the idea is the crisscross is a magma chamber feeding magmas to these SDRs. Now remember, originally they started the topography and they flowed down this way of a spreading center. So in fact, this is where we would have our site of breakup. This is continental crust and thin continental crust. Over here, we have seafloor spreading and basically we have no place here uh, or philosophically to have any continental crust whatsoever. So the breakup position and it's linked to this crisscross pattern is very important. Uh, so next, we're going to jump all the way down to the Pilotus Basin to look at some really, no, I wanted to say something here. The interesting thing about this margin is that, as I said, the thickness here, even with this SDR package, seaward dimming reflector package, um, basically is about eight to 10 kilometers thick, the same here. So the SDRs are not necessarily tied in any way or form to necessarily thick uh, magmatic crust or to plumes per se. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. This simply means, the SDR package here simply means we are having seafloor spreading subaerially. 
So now we're going to go look at the Plotter's Basin, and we're going to talk about a paper by Harkin that was published earlier this year. And we feel that there are a lot of issues here that I just addressed with the Sojipi uh, Jaquipi Basin. And again, a depth section, we see a reflector sitting in, in here, a very strong reflector. And though this is poorly defined, there's a series of flows in here. You can just get the hint of these flows. These are Padana basalt flows. Here they have been drilled. These are indeed Padana basalt, 134 million years. There's some rifts in here, some normal faults. So this is a deformed package of, uh, of basically uh, flows, continental flood basalts of the Padana basin, or flows that are going within the rift basin. And then- No, that's good. 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. As we cross this line, we see that this package here basically onlaps this line in here. Therefore, this package of SDRs are significantly, they are younger than the package in here. These are deformed and rotated. These are undeformed uh, seaward dipping reflectors. And this line in here, rather than a rift section as done by Harkin, is actually the layer two, layer three boundary of the SDR crust, which becomes layer two, layer three of ocean crust eventually. So they have some interesting ideas that the flow first is in a package, flows to the right, and then later they flow to the left. But all these packages thicken to the right, in other words, to the east. So our view is very different to this. We say, no, we believe that all of these are SDRs. Everything flowed, starting even from here, actually from here, the first crisscross pattern, that this is subaerial sea force, pretty much very thick uh, SDRs because we're on top of a plume, the Tristan de Cunha plume, and we thin as we go further and further to the east. Um, okay, so we've talked a lot about that. Now, this is sort of the same. We started with this for, for East Greenland, and again, we have a basalt package that's been drilled by various ODP section um, surveys. And so we have a flex system in here where we have basically thalidic dikes rotating this. And this whole package is onlapped by seaward dipping reflectors and by a magmatic package in here that onlaps back over here. So let's see. We would like to say uh, age-wise, we can show that this is an older package. This is a younger package. These are all being drilled. They are indeed thalidic basalts but these are deformed and rotated, and these are not. So we think, let's see, we can see exactly the same thing in Iceland, where we have beautiful rotated packages. And actually what is happening is that these guys, I've turned it in the same way, they are pointing to, they are pointing to the, the CST with different reflectors, to the ridge or to the spring center that formed them. This has been rotated, east is to the left, west is to the right. And we can see that there's the same trajectory. And here we can walk this and walk to the extrusion center to the west. So we know that these SDR packages are coming from an extrusion center. Um, let's see, I'm going to basically say we have taken the pattern. So where does all this lead us? Trying to come to a conclusion. So the, the pattern paper, we say, well, now all of this is SDR magmatic crust, or if you like, subaerial seafloor spreading. It represents post breakup. Breakup is here where I get the first flow or first gabbroic, uh, um, uh, yeah, what do you call them, um, chambers, magma chambers to feel, feed the diagonals, feed these flows above. Everything else is seen with. Uh, now, there's a lot of talk about contamination. And we agree with people that if you are actually working onshore over here and you're looking at the basalts of this system in here, they will indeed be uh, contaminated both by the magnets moving up through here, filling the sin rift systems and being contaminated. And these guys out here, they might be contaminated by something different. And uh, Ritzker and Sasha have, have modeled this, where on a margin, the continental mantle is dragged into the spreading center. And so here where we have a spreading center, uh, this uh, mixed uh, mantle of the centerspheres of the, of, the, of the ocean and lithospheres of the continent give rise to a mixed, uh, mixed signal in here in terms of the chemistry. Conclusions. We believe there's two fundamentally different magmatic systems that characterize the passive mountains. A pre-rift continental flood basalt flow and a sin rift deformed volcanic flow in indicator sediments filling sin rift accommodation, crustal dike swarms and crustal fracturing, i.e. the necking zone of Brazil close to the Panama Basin, east, uh, east Greenland. And a second post breakup essentially underformed 
the true SDR flow package that represents brand new real estate. It represents subreal seafloor spreading. The seafloor spreading can be because of thick magmatic crust or because we have a restrictive and isolated environment. So analyzing the SDRs from the Sergipe uh, and, and the Jacuipi Basin, we can see that SDR crust is really identical to layer two and layer three of ocean crust. And we use the relatively long reflector length of SDRs, as I mentioned earlier, to represent subaerial seafloor spreading. And then as they become less and less, or uh, they become shorter and shorter, we are looking at the drowning, the slow drowning of the margin, and eventually putting this into deep water uh, deep, deep water, ocean, uh, ocean circulation conditions. So bottom line, we think that the SDRs that are post breakup and that they onlap this first deformed system actually re represent subaerial seafloor spreading, but post breakup systems, they are part of seafloor spreading proper. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. And for a few questions. Oh, that's already one. Uh, Mohammed, would you like to ask it yourself, please? Sir, have you seen anywhere failed, uh, rifted uh, volcanic margin? Where, you know, where the margin is not succeeded uh, into seafloor spreading, having in nature of uh, volcanic SDRs and other things, so conjugate forms. I'm really sorry, but you're breaking up. Can someone repeat the message, Sasha? Can you repeat that maybe? Yeah. Uh, the question is whether there is any example for a failed volcanic rifted margin. Uh, for a volcanic rifted margin? That's the question? Yes. Well, no one uh, failed. Say what? Failed volcanic um, rift. Field vo well, uh, that's an interesting point. If it's a field volcanic rift and it's on continental crust, then for us, it's going to be a class of magmatic systems of volcanics that represent uh, sin rift and pre breakup. They're on continental crust and they're forming and being deposited on ocean crust and from directly underneath. They're not, we would not call those seaward dipping reflectors. We reserve seaward dipping reflector term for those uh, younger um, post breakup underformed sequences. And so I can have a volcanic margin like the Verring or in fact uh, East Greenland, they are volcanic margins. And they do have SDR packages, but they're the distal packages. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are very well in time and I'd like to keep it that way. So if you have more questions, please put them in the chat and we'll uh, continue with uh, Yolanta's talk. Thanks, Gary.